In the far-flung future, a weary King Thor the Allfather tries to restart humanity on Midgard, but what will stand in his way? Let's all find out together, shall we, as we hop to the pages of Thor issue number five. Alrighty then, so this story here starts with a fun little flashback to Thor and Wolverine sharing some of their best drinking stories. Wolverine wins, of course, saying that he actually invented beer during a time travel adventure, and this is true, and Jason Aaron referencing his own work. The bar ends up getting robbed by a bunch of half hapless thugs, and the God of Thunder and the Canadian Knucklehead take great pleasure in dispatching them. This adventure no doubt becoming yet another in their ever-long repertoire of awesome drinking stories. Now, in the far-flung future, these two men meet again, only under very, very different circumstances. Wolverine has become the Old Man Phoenix, and Thor, King of Asgard, as well as the current protector of Midgard. Granted, Midgard needs a lot of help right now because everything else in the universe is seemingly dying. At first, Thor sees this reunion as a miracle. After all, he's trying to bring life back to the universe and back to Earth. Wolverine now has the power of red-hot creation inside of him. It's a no-brainer, right? There's only one big problem, and that is Old Man Phoenix doesn't want to help, either because the power has completely corrupted his mind, or because he truly believes that Earth's time is over and that it needs to die. I mean, after all, the Phoenix is kind of an expert on death and rebirth for that matter, so maybe Old Man Phoenix knows what he's talking about. The two have a climactic duel in the dark vacuum of space, throwing absolutely everything they have at each other. Old Man Phoenix, though, says that Thor shouldn't be exhausting himself fighting him right now because there are far worse things in the universe that have their eyes trained on Earth. One of those things is Ego the Necroplanet, formerly Ego the Living Planet, who absorbed Gore the God Butcher's all-black Necro Sword. This is actually a hell of a callback to way earlier in Jason Aaron's Thor writing career, and to think that he's been writing the book for so long. The Necro Planet gets stopped up, however, by a tiny little worm that wants the Necro Sword for itself. The worm is tiny, green, and tricky, and I'm not saying it's Loki, but it's probably Loki. Now, back at the main event, our heroes can continue to knock the ever-loving crap out of each other, Thor thinks for a minute that he might actually have gotten the upper hand on Old Man Phoenix by driving his hammer through his chest and out the other side. This only serving to prove that perhaps King Thor is starting to lose it in his old age because he forgets, oh yeah, Wolverine, amazing healing factor, crap. I could chop off Wolverine's head, throw it to the center of the sun, and he'd still probably find a way to come back. It's made very clear that this battle isn't going to end anytime soon and that there might not be left standing in space once these two are done. However, back on Midgard, the Thunder Goddesses, Thor's three granddaughters, are dealing with their own trouble right now. A spaceship shows up to Earth carrying famous Marvel monsters like Fing Fang Foom, but they're not actually the real threat. They've only come to prepare the planet for their master. And that is revealed to be, as the comic winds down, Doom. But not just any Doctor Doom, one who is Iron Fist, Sorcerer Supreme, Starbrand, and and spirit of vengeance all in one. Yeah, it seems that when the world died, old Victor Von Doom went on a multi-classing spree, and now he's just way too OP. They're gonna have to nerf him in the next update, I tell ya. So that was Thor issue number five, everybody, and overall, I really like that Jason Aaron has set up this precedent for his comic that every couple issues we get to jump to the far-flung future and take a story that's already pretty crazy and just turn it up to 11 even further. This issue also kind of feels like a big celebration on Aaron's part for the X-Men and the Fantastic Fantastic Four finally being back in the Marvel comic writer's toy chest, and because of that, he's deciding to write stuff he hasn't written in a long time or never before. Ultimately, if you just like cool things like old King Thor knocking around old man Phoenix, then I think you're most definitely going to enjoy this issue, because it is cool, and that's why it gets an 8 out of 10. Hey there, everyone. It's your old pal, Cape Jolik, and I want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed what you saw, and if you did, why not take a closer look at some of these other videos I have available on the channel? Then you can follow me on Twitter. Twitter and Facebook at Cape Jewel, so you're always up to speed on what I'm doing next. And hey, if you're in a supportive mood, why not check out my Patreon page? Patrons get exclusive access to videos and content before anyone else, and you can do so for as little as a dollar a month. I would really appreciate it. And with that, I will be sure.